My memory of his birth is a blur of school, job, marriage, the babies coming, the screaming, and then we went back to work. Cheryl was a day shift nurse. I was a sports writer working days, nights, and weekends. Because when you're young and hungry and tireless, all you want to do is work and get to where you want to be. Where I wanted to be was not in a labor room with the screaming. I wanted to be out making the future happen. I was a kid myself, and I didn't know the future was happening. In that labor room, our son being born. Then suddenly, I was 47 years old, and our son was a father, and he knew what was happening, even if I never knew. Jeff held the twins in his arms and called them Jake and Jed, my country boys. He looked into the camera, and I'd never seen a prouder dad. Had I ever held our son in my arms and had a picture made? I could search in drawers and boxes, and maybe I'd find a picture, but that wouldn't count, because it would mean I didn't remember, and the picture must not have meant much to me when it was taken. I made a fool of myself in love with the grandsons, and I figured I did that because I didn't do it for my son, and here was a second chance. Maybe I could show love now, and my son would notice and be happy that I'm his dad loving his boys the way I never loved him. Or maybe it would remind him how much he resented the absence of that love. Who knows? We're all guessing. My guess is my son saw in my love of the grandsons a love he never saw for him, and somewhere in him there is a mournful bell tolling for the absence of his father's love, and that bell never goes quiet. So I'm the storyteller, reading this book about Jared who became Goblin. In every book like this, where the storyteller is lost in the dark and looking for the light, people hearing the story want to know how a father's son and a grandfather's grandson goes to live on the street, where he drinks and finds a way to hop trains across America, where he drinks more. People hearing the story want to know how it happened and why, and the best the storyteller can do is to do what he does, which is to find those who knew him, the road dogs who traveled with Goblin, and listen to what they say and how they say it. Jared's journey put him in a small circle of 21st century hobos who call themselves traveling kids. A buddy of his called their world an underbelly of America that most people don't even know exists. They get where they're going by any means available. They walk, they hitchhike, they ride the dog, the Greyhound bus. Most often, they clamber onto freight trains, which is illegal, dangerous, and, once done, apparently irresistible. In five years, Jared rode trains 25,000 miles. A line tracing Jared's travels moves through Virginia and the Carolinas into Florida and along the Gulf. It runs to California and back, up to Tennessee, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, before turning north to Vermont and south through Massachusetts to New York. He called from Richmond and San Diego, from Boston, Chicago, and Ocala. He loved New Orleans. He paraded in the French Quarter and drank on a Mississippi River wharf by the Café du Monde. There he sang with a crew he named the Scurvy Bastards, raggedy-ass mischief-makers, who in another time might have been prankster pirates coming ashore from the Caribbean. He called to say hi, to chatter about his latest adventure. Naked girls, Grandpa, and they're running through the forest, naked. He taught me how easy it was for a grandpa to wire cash from Western Union. I need a megabus ticket from Albany to the city. Nineteen dollars is all. The world of traveling kids is at once small and unlimited. There may be only a couple hundred of them, no one knows. Maybe a thousand, no one cares enough to count them. They live inside no boundaries. Wherever they are, that's where they want to be. I'm reading now in the service of a storyteller's passion, which is always the same. Find a good story and tell it well. I have told a thousand stories about other people, and those were easy because everything could be made to make sense. But when